Real quick, before this video gets started, I wanna remind you guys, you only have a few days left to be entered to win both of these motorcycles. Go over patreon.com slash campeasycustoms, always the first link in the description below, and get signed up before it's too late. All right, what is up guys? Jared Campisi with my good buddy, Dotto. Welcome back to the channel. Today's gonna be a really fun video. Dotto is gonna be riding our giveaway M1000 single R for the very first time and giving us his first impressions. We're also gonna be getting more break-in miles on this bike. I'm gonna be doing a final ride on the Panigale V2 Bayless to make sure it's ready for the giveaway on March 23rd. And we're gonna be talking about the engine that exploded in Manny's BMW M1000 RR. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. All right. We're on the bikes. I'm gonna show Dotto just a quick brief overview. So obviously you got your power button. It's a keyless key fob, so you just press this. That turns it on. And then obviously your start stop button's the same. Um, the one thing I do wanna show you is the modes. So I've been riding it in road mode because it is still in the break-in period. You could do dynamic if you want. I wouldn't do race or range, so which one do you wanna be in? Try road. Road is fine. Start. Yeah. I'm gonna turn the heated grips off. Yeah. There's gonna be a soft rev limiter at 8,000. If you hit it, it literally like did 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 did. So hold it there for about five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Let's not <laughs> blow it up. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. We're gonna be covering everything that happened with Manny's bike um, once we get out on the road. But I just want to make sure Dotto's all sorted out. So Dotto, you've never ridden one of these? Uh, not the single R. Not. Yeah. No, yeah. This is. I can already feel that I'm going to be comfortable on yeah, it. Yeah, it's pretty different, honestly, than the regular, than mm -hmm. the double R. Um, with the tuning, the riding position, obviously. I love the view already. I know, dude. It's amazing. Uh-huh. The mirrors work. Let's get on the road. Okay. And then we'll Sorry, ride. I'm excited. I know, I am too. So, the first thing I want to talk about real quick to get out of the way, because I've gotten literally hundreds and hundreds, maybe even thousands of comments about, is um, my thoughts and our thoughts on Manny's M1000 RR engine that didn't explode, but basically failed. He had an engine failure with his brand new M1000 RR. I think it had like 400 miles on it or something, 500 miles. Um, I talked to Manny about it actually this week for a little while. And um, from everything that I can gather, it sounds to me like BMW should have covered it and just got him a new engine under warranty. And I think it was a pretty big deal that they didn't do. I think it was a big screw up on their part for not doing that. Um, not only because Manny has an audience and he sells motorcycle parts for a living, um, but I just think that's the right thing that you should do for your customers. I mean, how much is it gonna cost BMW? Maybe 10 grand, 15 grand? But I think that that's 100% worth it over having this happen. His video basically went viral for his channel. I think it has 60 or 70,000 views and like two or 3,000 comments. And now there's all these people commenting on my video because I bought a bike that doesn't even have the same engine. So I think that I think that was a bad move on their part and I hope that they make it right in the future. We are gonna be very careful with this bike with the break-in period. We're gonna do everything by the book just in case, God forbid, something does happen. But um, like I said, I've had three, this is my third BMW, uh, an S1000 RR, an M1000 RR, and now an M1000 single R, and we've never had any issues. So. Um, hopefully nothing happens and it was just a fluke, but um, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Dodsky's on the new 2024 M1000R. How's it feel, bud? Alright, I got a lot to say already. <laughs> <laughs> I do. It's super smooth, holy shit. Yeah, insanely smooth. Uh-huh, the engine, like it doesn't like vibrate like a typical, you know, leader bike. It's so smooth when it shifts, it's incredible. I can only but not in a bad what, way, right? Like it's Oh yeah, absolutely in a good way. Yeah. And um, the, the first, I don't want to say gripe because it's not really that bad, but the first thing I noticed instantly is I'm literally yeah. leaning, I feel like I'm leaning forward and, and I'm like into the tank. It's a and very it aggressive, a very aggressive riding, for, riding position. For a naked yeah. bike. Yeah, but yeah. that's also a good thing because... It is. Um, the way that they position the dashboard really low and everything, you literally see the entire road, yep. and it feels like there's no bike on there. Yeah, it's you know? so dope. So, for me, for awareness, when I'm riding, the less I have to distract in front of me, the better. Yep. And that is awesome about this bike, because I'm already like enjoying, I don't know, I'm enjoying the views when I'm riding, because I'm not even looking down at the dash. No. So, how, how, uh, good, how good is the quick shifter? The quick shifter is so smooth. <laughs> it's insane, I right? I can't hear anything over your exhaust, so I have to watch my RPM. <laughs> but um, 
the brakes are incredible on yeah. this thing. Yeah, isn't that, you know that's a Nissan Master and Nissan Caliper. It's crazy. It feels I, better than these Brembos, dude. I truly think that if you don't ride this on the track, that's exactly like what I say. Really, really keep the brakes up. You don't really probably going to be fine. Yeah, the factory brakes on this are awesome. Like if you buy this and you ride it every day and you're not, you know, going 200 miles an hour well, everywhere, you should e totally even fine. hard street use I think would be fine. Uh -huh. I think the only thing that you would get in trouble with maybe is the track. There might be some brake fade over time. Oh yeah. But I honestly, they feel better than I'm trying to think. Maybe the SP2 is the last time I felt brakes like that. Wow, that, this is so smooth, it's almost scary. Like, how is this even, like, it feels like an electric bike. How, it does, but but it's still, when you get on it, you'll you'll hear the engine under you, and we put an exhaust, the full titanium system on it, it's gonna sound amazing. But also, did you notice, Otto? Flick it back and forth once. Just like, go, go back and forth, like, back and, like this. Very flickable. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, like, I think, I think also, Maybe the, I didn't even look at the tire profile on these, but a lot of times the tire profile is, if it's a little bit taller, um, it makes it easier. easier to lean over. Yeah. And on this, I feel like it's up higher, like the, you sit up higher on the bike. Yeah. So like compared to, let's say the Diablo is like the extreme opposite. Yeah, exactly. So this feels way nicer. And the way that these bars are set up too, they're wider. It feels like they're wider. So pressing down on the bars also is, is a lot easier. Yeah. I don't know, this thing overall is already like winning me over. The usability, that's what I said in my first ride. I said I think this is one of the easiest bikes that I've ever ridden. Mm -hmm. It's just so premium, so much technology. Dude, it has a hill hold mode on there. Like when you're on a hill, it'll hold you there. Like the uh, M1000 double R did. Yes, exactly. The brake hold is on, that's pretty cool. Isn't that cool? Now you can put it in neutral and you can just completely go off. Mm -hmm. So the brake hold will go on automatically. Um, at certain points, whenever it senses you're on a hill, or you can double tap the brake quickly, either the front or the rear, and it'll engage it. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Awesome. When you start letting the clutch out, it disengages. That clutch is so much lighter than my Street Fighter, it's not even funny. And it engages, it feels like it's an electronic clutch. It doesn't feel... It's not, though. ...very mechanical. Oh, I know. I'm yeah. just saying. Like, it's crazy the feedback you get. Yup. It's a good bike, man. It spoils you. Because I'm now a little, I'm a little short on it, not too much. Yeah, yeah, but I think is it is it higher than the S1000 double R? I can't remember if it's um, lower or higher. I think it's lower. Okay, but the, that would make the sense. Whole, Let's go. The, Let's go. Come on. If this thing wasn't breaking for me, I would have. <laughs> left, left, left. Yep. <laughs> God, this You're bike. You're the one that was about to miss it. This bike sounds so good, dude. Miss that man. That was funky. <laughs> this is so uncomfortable compared to I've been riding that bike all week. Holy shit, you scared the hell out of me. Feel a little bit of end breaking. Oh, it's so smooth, man. I I Isn't it insane? It's so nice! Hats off the BMW for <laughs> making some of the smoothest quick shifters on their motorcycles and also like everything. The like whole package. Huh? It's the whole package. Like all of it together. It's super yeah. smooth. All of it. Out the of clutch. the box, this thing is so impressive. Yeah, for a stock bike, I said, dude. Think, okay, so Dotto, think about this. People are asking me, that or a Street Fighter, right? Okay, let's do the math. That was 27,000, right? We'll just do MSRP. We'll, we won't do taxes and all that shit. Um, the V4S Street Fighter is the same price, or maybe a, maybe a grand more, I can't remember. Okay. The V4S Street Fighter, you do not get carbon wheels or all of those carbon accessories. No cruise control, no heated grips, right? If you want that, all that stuff I mentioned, you have to step up to the SP2 model. That's thirty-five or $36,000, dude. It's almost That's 10 insane. grand over that bike. And you still don't get cruise control and you don't get um, heated grips. You do right, get- so, so question for you, since you know a little bit more about the pricing, um, does, is the Street Fighter versus the, the fairing um, 
Panigales, are they, what's the price difference? I know that the... The Panigales are, they're very similar. Panigales are a little bit more, maybe like a couple hundred or maybe a thousand more. Okay. Yeah. I don't know, dude, BMW put together a pretty impressive package. I was so impressed by the, the last BMW. Oh, the M1000, our carbon M1000? I don't, what it is, like, I swear, naked bikes are growing on me so much. I've been saying that, dude. We're getting older, and they just make a lot more sense for what we do. Hey, speak for yourself, old man. We're not on the track ripping bikes around, you know? But this, what, what I'm, I guess what I'm trying to say is not necessarily, like, I always say, oh, I'm getting older. It's the, I think it's the fact that uh, super bikes, or even high-end sport bikes, really don't feel like they belong on the road no not anymore they're too powerful dude they used to be 150 horsepower you know yeah they used to be like you could like you know like really give them hell and yeah. stuff and uh -huh. now what the hell are you gonna do with 200 horsepower literally nothing dude but that is a 200 horsepower bike <laughs> i think it's 205 or something like that uh-huh but it's tuned differently it's tuned for the street it has a lower red line it makes power lower down it's more comfortable to ride and honestly, you could probably perform better on that bike than you would on a on a street on a. On All right, a, there is something else that I noticed that, that's really worth mentioning. Yeah, I'm in sixth gear right now. Oh yeah. And I I speak very highly about Ducatis because we built a lot of them and they are like the cream of the crop. I'm in sixth gear. Watch, no hesitation. Yeah, I know. And it just takes off. You know I what that is, that. Dado? It's the yeah. variable. Uh, it's the DCT. So it has like a cam shaft or some shit. You would know more about that than me. But basically it gives it torque down low in the rev limiters. And then it swaps to a different profile as you go up. We're going left. And it's very impressive. In six that. gear at that RPM. And Dado, this isn't even broken in yet. Wait until we tune it. That's what I was just about to say. It's, it's a bone stock bike and it feels so damn good. Uh-huh. Now and you're right, without an exhaust, like hearing the engine below you, you can cool. Yeah, you can hear it still. It's it's not yeah. it's not like what it should be, but you can still hear it, right? Oh I can hear it. I can I can feel it when you like get it. Like right underneath your head. Uh-huh. Yeah. So we're gonna do a whole video, Dotto. I want you to do it with me, where we can we ride my Street Fighter versus that. And we literally let, because people have been asking me which one would, should they buy? I hate to say this, but I think I already like this better. I know, dude. Very, very fucking smooth, dude. How? I told you. And it's fast, right? When you open it up, dude? It's fast for a bike with a limiter that's not. At 8,000 RPMs. I don't want to, like, I don't, I didn't get close to the 8,000 mark yet, but. Yeah. It feels so good, dude. Like, you can. I actually it's feel very hurt. comfortable on it. I told you, it's, that's what I said. It's a bike, you jump on it, you immediately feel at home after a few minutes. I didn't realize that, like, the dash, everything reminds me so much of the m 1000 R. It's the same dash. The dash is, yeah, the dash is the same, and... And it's massive. It, it's massive, but it's so low. Like, when I'm looking ahead, yeah. all I see is road, Right, man. it's not like, in your even, face. Like, down the here, it's not. You know what else is crazy, Dotto? You can what? hook your phone up to that that bike, and really? you can have turn-by-turn -turn navigation on the dash, your music, no yeah, your contacts, phone calls, everything. I think the other one was that way, too. Yeah, it was. But isn't that crazy? It is. It's really impressive technology. It's like the package that they deliver for that price. So the reason they're able to get away with that is because of saving costs on the, like the calipers, right? They're not Brembo, and they're not a whole Brembo system. And then the suspension's Murasaki, so it's not Olin's. But to be honest, on the road, I don't think it matters, right? I keep telling people, even if you're a super aggressive rider, you really, really, really have to be on the track pushing it to yep. take advantage of aftermarket race suspension. Yep. The, like maybe 10 years ago, factory bikes that you pay a premium for didn't really have the technology but now like a package like this is freaking insane it is like, dude the brakes the suspension the uh the amount of power and torque that the engines make is it's great. impressive i never saw in a million years that this is how far we've come in such a short i know of time. it's crazy all right so we talked about all the things that both of us love about that bike let's talk about some of the things that we don't like about the bike so go ahead dotto okay number one thing 
that I noticed as soon as I sat on it. <laughs> it's the aggressive rider position when you're seated. Yeah. And then even when I adjust myself, I find myself smashing into the tank a lot easier. Uh -huh. If you Maybe. try to move back on the seat, he's saying. You do. And yeah. then for, for me, just because of how my body is, it doesn't feel natural to sit back here. No. Now, if I was tucking in, it would. Yes, that would make but, sense. But, the, but just like lounging on the bike, yeah. like, casual riding i feel like i it's a little too much but like you're smashing a, your balls against a gas tank yeah. I, feel, I felt the same way it is a m1000 so yes. they wanted to be a little aggressive about yes. it and i appreciate that it's not um, like a game breaker or anything no just no. something I'm to just, know I, I gotta i gotta nip it something, yeah you know yeah yeah um and also i have um some issues with my like neck and hands so having a lot of the weight on the front is already making my hand in a little numb uh -huh. but that's just i mean that's a Other people thing. may not complain about it yeah. at all. I rode um, it for a while and I didn't have any issues. And then I guess everything else is just the stock, like some of yeah, the stock. Like like the exhaust. Exhaust. Yeah, like the exhaust. Other than that, I can't. I it's can't, pretty freaking good. I can't pick it apart, man. It's impressive as hell. It is. Where are we going? Straight. Okay. Yeah, I'm really happy with that package. The videos really haven't been getting as many views. I thought the purchase video for that would get a lot more views. No. Um, I don't know if it's not as popular of a bike for people or what, but um, yeah, let us know what you guys think of this bike in the comment section below. I mean, a lot of people were excited about it, that we were doing it, um, but I don't know, man. That's a really good bike. Surprisingly really good. Out of the box, look. Yeah, dude. I gotta vary the RPMs a little bit, you know what I'm saying? What's that? I said I gotta vary the RPMs a little bit. Yeah, we're damn. still breaking it in, right? Yeah, I, I touched the brake and I feel like I'm I gonna told go. you, they're good, dude. <laughs> Very good. They're good. I was gonna apologize because I keep hitting the throttle and letting off, uh, doing as much engine braking as possible without yeah. using the actual brake. Well, this isn't a braking period, we gotta make sure it's all off kosher before we do this. I first do the service. same thing, yeah. I'm actually going to have the first service auto done by BMW because I don't want to, oh my god. <laughs> what? I don't want to risk, um, if God forbid anything happens, I don't want them to say like we didn't, I should have had BMW do the first That's service. Right. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, so I'm going to have them do that because um, I have to have it there anyway for them to do the electronic stuff. So I haven't taken it past 6,000. And you can still have a good amount of fun on it. What's that? And you can still have a good amount of fun on it. Absolutely. I mean, you, you've seen how I took off. Oh, I, forgot, <laughs> I forgot about this turn. Oops. Yeah, you're good. How awesome is this road, though? Huh? How awesome is this road? Oh, it's awesome. I used to ride back here with my buddies. It's and, so amazing. And one of them, the chain broke and fucking went flying. Oh, shit. It was, it was the only time I witnessed that. He almost lost his leg. Oh, man. That's it, scary. Yeah. And we were rolling, dude. What a nice, oh my god. Yeah. I'm gonna, like, every day that it's nice, I swear I'm gonna call off work. <laughs> I know, dude. I've been riding every day. I've been uh, putting about 80 miles on it per day the last couple of days. Dude, I, I think this is one of those bikes that I don't want to get off of. Uh-huh. I found myself, there's, there's only a few bikes that has that quality where you ride it and then you're thinking about wanting to ride it again as soon as you get off of it, you know, or your turn comes up and it's, for your house and you want to just keep going that's one of them i just got a little air there i did too <laughs> um so my top three bikes and this is crazy that i'm saying this the top three bikes that i would choose right now out of any bike out there is diablo number one yeah 1260 right now because i don't have much seat time on this i would say the monster and this is a close yeah. tie. I had a okay. The monster modified like we yes, had. Yes, that thing was so um, sick. I know. I just can't stop thinking about that. How much character? I know. Had. I've been thinking about it too. And this and this bike, obviously. I mean, once we modify it and give it's it, gonna be nutty, dude. Oh, uh, it's so gonna be awesome. So I'm very curious for the the next video whenever we take that and my Street Fighter out because you don't have a lot of street uh, seat time on my Street Fighter, and to be fair, I don't either. Not on that one, but. That's, I think, going to tell the tale. So I agree with you. My top three is very similar to that right now. I, the, the, I, I hate to make assumptions, but I'm going to go ahead and say it now. 
I think I like this bike better than the Street Fighter. Yeah. Or the Panigale. Just for like daily overall ease of use, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to take a bike to like a bike night or something, obviously the, the, the Street Fighter, you know, for the dead sexiness and the character. But if you're going to be commuting and using it all the time and stuff, I don't know. That bike's going to be tough to beat. This is a lot easier to whip around Ex corners. Yeah, and just get on with everything, dude. From the from the key fob, the shifting of gears, the clutch, the throttle. Look at this view. I know it's beautiful, dude. Oh, but I I, I think I'm so happy that it's like nice spring. out. Yeah, in the middle of March, it's like 80 degrees. It's fucking crazy. All right, we are back, safe and sound. My GoPro died, so I wasn't able to give you any more information on what happened with the bike, but all is well, we think, at least for now. So that's good. What do you think, Dotto? This was mainly about you and your first thoughts and feelings on it. I'm, I'm even more impressed than I thought it was gonna be. And I actually had, uh, I had some like good feedback just reading for what people wrote and, you know, people's feedback from riding it, obviously, the platform, this, the, the M1000 double R and the single R are both like, I got on it instantly. I'm like, shit, this is going to be nice. And then so good. I just wanted to keep riding. We were out for like yeah, two hours. Same. And it just feels like. Cause it's comfortable and easy. Comfortable, yeah. Yeah. Um, overall, the bike is super impressive. It's, it runs smooth. It shifts super smooth. It has a ton of torque and it's not even unlocked yet. Like it's still in like break in period and um, everything feels great. Uh, the aggressive riding position for me, particularly, I don't, I'm not a fan, but it's not a deal breaker. Like I would definitely, so and Jared, uh, this is a lot more fun for me than like, like a V4. Mm -hmm. There's things that I love about it. Especially but the type of roads we ride on exactly. around here. It's not like, yeah, you the, need to be out The, the big Panigales don't make any sense. Like I had a blast on this thing today, yeah. So super fun. Um, I love the fact that you can, the screen's tucked in, even though it's huge, it's, it's tucked so down. Nice. So you see everything here. Yeah. So you almost feel like you have no bike underneath. Yeah, that's awesome. the whole That's the whole thrill of the naked bike. You and feel it. One thing I didn't mention during the whole thing is like, even with, uh, like look at look at this front end, you know? So premium, right? Yeah, when that's I saw the, the time running when light. I saw the reflection look at and that the shit. wings and everything, just so awesome. It looks so good. And we these are good mirrors for stock mirrors, mm -hmm. but when we remove these, we'll do the aero bar and mirrors. It's gonna look even better, you know? And when we re replace that with a nice Rizoma, blue Rizoma one, it's gonna be dude, it's gonna be a badass build. Really and the full tie system on it, you know, and the Bren flash, dude, it's gonna be nat. Dude, the carbon wheels, like I don't know of any bike that you can get for 26 grand that comes with carbon wheels. Do, like, do you know of any? I don't. No, and um, out of all the bikes, I think that we've gotten brand new that were like leader bikes, all of the platforms, this feels the least detuned. Yeah, And restricted, yeah. And they still are, that's the thing. It uh -huh. still is. Oh, I know. Yeah. I'm saying like it feels really good for a brand new bike that that's... Some know. of my patrons were saying, um, one, of, one of my patrons has this bike. Well, actually, I think a couple of them do. And he was saying when you put in a full tie system with the Bren Flash on this, you pick up like 30 or 40 horsepower in some of the mid-range and some of the gears. And he said it's insane, like absolutely insane. And to be honest, Dada was pulling away from me on the V2. And this is fully tuned and everything. I mean, it's only 150 horsepower. This is 205, so that makes sense. But this is fully detuned right now. And like everything, isn't it so premium? All of it, every, all of every, the, the whole package is really impressive. So I'm excited. I'm glad that you feel exactly the same way that I do. It's good that, um, that people can hear like a second opinion and don't think I'm just blowing smoke up their ass. I knew it was going to be good, but not this good yeah yes exactly that's exactly how i felt but yeah i'm stoked so yeah if you guys have any questions or comments or things that you want to know about this bike let me know we are going to do like i said a comparison versus my street fighter um in the future hopefully in the next week or two and then don't forget right now you can be entered to win both of these bikes so patreon.com slash camp pz customs it's always the first link in the description below uh it the whole page is revamped head on over there look it all over read about it it's super easy now it's it's a monthly payment thing um and it should be all very straightforward and that's why we're able to do multiple bikes at the same time and the more um people that we get signing up for these builds guys i'm just going to add more bikes to the build we're just going to get more but i was talking to dotto about maybe even adding a harley just for something different you know everyone wants different stuff what it was for <laughs> so you can ride like this you've lost it yeah harley would be 
super dirty. Right? Sportster People build. People have been asking a lot about Harleys. Yeah. So something like Something Harley. different, you know? Yeah. Uh, MV Agusta, I want to do a rush. I'm going to be talking to MV. Yeah. So anyway, that's it. So a lot of good, a lot of fun stuff coming on, especially because it's almost, it's spring, but you know, we're getting there with the weather. And uh, I'm really excited for everything that's going on in the content. And of course, it all comes down to you guys. So um, if you enjoy these videos, give them a big old juicy thumbs up. Subscribe for more. We'll see you all in the next one. Peace.